so I can say hi, Mom. Hi. Wait to her. Oh. Mother's Day started as a wonderful day. There's Bubba. Bryson was one day shy of being six weeks old, and it was gorgeous outside, and we decided to go for a walk. Walked around the block, and I shot video on my phone of Kinley riding her trike for the first time around the neighborhood, and Bryson in the stroller, and just had a wonderful day together. Around two in the morning, Jenna sat up, she said that she felt warm, that she felt a little bit nauseous, um, and it's just something was off. And her arms postured. She, it almost it looked like uh, an NFL you know, referee signaling a, a field goal. I hit 911. The dispatcher, um, when he connected, he asked me if. Jenna had any um, previous symptoms, any medical conditions. I told him no, and it was at that point I lost all pulse, I lost all function from her body. Her body just stopped, and it was the most terrifying moment because I, I, I didn't know what was going on. Then I lost her. I, I was literally holding my wife, um, but I laid her down and uh, started into CPR. When we were responding to the call and it initially came out as a seizure with a female in her 30s, we don't really think too much about that. And then when we heard the CPR in progress, that definitely raises your eyebrows a little bit as to why is this going on. Started getting towards the 15 or 20 minute mark which is usually not very great outcomes. And for Jenna, we really weren't seeing any signs of improvement. Um, and we were just doing everything we could. You, you know, when you have, especially when you have family in the room, you, you really, you really want them to, to know that you're doing everything possible. And I reached down and I, I felt a great pulse on Jenna. And I looked up to everybody and said, hey guys, we've got a pulse. They told us that protocol is around 20 minutes. They could have easily called, but we found out that these responders um, made a singular pact that night. Uh, not to give up. How much time do I have to get that patient here safely to where we can intervene and we don't have major problems? We initiated the hypothermia protocol on Jenna because her heart stopped beating. Um, there is a moment to where there is a lack of oxygen being supplied to the brain. When there is a lack of oxygen to the cells, then we encounter cellular death. The only way to stop that is to slow down the demands of the body, and we do that by um, cooling the body so that tissue metabolism is then slowed. Jenna suffered spontaneous coronary artery dissection. What happens is that there's a tear in the lining of the coronary artery, and in that tear, blood fills and that pushes against the opening of that artery and occludes it. Here is this young woman, thriving career, beautiful young family, baby, whose world has just been turned upside down. Each time I told neurologists and cardiologists, I want you to be realistic with what the outcome could be, um, because that's what she would expect. And I think somewhere in there she's hearing what those expectations are, and she would want to overcome them. And I know that she, I know that she will. Um, so they gave me odds and I threw them out at that point, but they were trying to be as realistic as possible and I appreciated that. The neurologist came in and was checking my eyes and I was pitch black blind. 
We think that probably when her brain didn't get good oxygenated blood flow from the heart problem, that she probably did have some seizures. I have a six-week-old baby at home, and I have a two-year-old at home, and am I ever going to be able to see them again? And it's such a lonely place, because I say, like, when the lights go out, like, you don't have anybody there, and you can hear them, but you feel you're so by yourself. We've had some powerful moments with, with our children. And obviously as a mother, she's used it to bring herself back from probably some very, in times, literally dark places, but other times figuratively dark places. I, I know she's had her struggles, but she's used her family as a strength. And I, I can't be more proud of, of my wife. I knew Jenna had a very special family because when I first walked in her room, they were there. And that is the most important predictor of how one will do from their clinical diagnosis and going forward. Our love story has more to it than laying in a hospital bed and spending my life in a rehab facility. So spontaneous coronary artery dissection, it's recognized, it's not common, and we don't have a lot of research yet in how to address it. Heart disease is the number one killer of women, and it, it doesn't discriminate. Hey, do you have any kisses for mommy? I look forward to the day that someone can say, this is what would have happened to me, but they were able to catch it ahead of time. We are excited to forever be together again and, and, and enjoy watching our family grow up the way that we expected it to.